And how do I do that? And the answer is, my God, it's really hard. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. If I'm being honest, there is no right set way to do that. Especially in those conditions. You know, I don't know, nor do you. Today I'm going to see a manufacturer importer of a household product. Can't tell you what it is, you'd work out who they are and confidentiality is everything in our business. However, the per item value of this product is between 500 and 1500 pounds, so, you know, it's not a fork. <laughs> so, I'm going to see this company. I've seen them a couple of times. We talked about marketing and digital marketing. Today, I think they want to talk about guerrilla marketing. They haven't called it that. But that's what I think we'll be covering today. They have a campaign, they're a very ethical business. Um, believe the industry is perhaps, well not perhaps, is behaving unethically. And <coughs> yes, they want to get people's attention and start a movement, which is incredibly difficult. However, that's why I'm going. So we'll give it a go. Guerrilla marketing, I think. You know, we'll see. You never know. I'll update you later. with the manufacturer and retailer of the household products and it was um, more or less what I thought we'd be talking about. We did spend half the session, which I wasn't expecting, talking about direct marketing and mailing and databases and leaflet drops and what's a great leaflet. And yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but I think they needed to revisit it. If marketing doesn't work straight away, it's easy to, to doubt that it is gonna work. So we did a bit of validation on the current strategy just to be sure that everything's still stacked up and I think it does. So that was the first part. The second part is probably more interesting and more in line with what I said this morning, which is this company are trying to run a campaign and I don't mean a sales and marketing campaign. I mean a proper change the way people think about a product and their industry. They're not trying to sell anything. It's a safety campaign. They want to spread the word in the UK to the people who buy their household item that, well, all the industry uses unsafe material. They just don't talk about it and no one acknowledges it. Um, oh, I don't know if that's true. I think it is because I've sat down with them a few times and spoken about their industry and the products and, and the science and and they definitely believe it and they've been in this business for 30 years so why would I doubt them? But whether it's true or not, the challenge given to me a while back and today is how can I get momentum and people to back a cause, a cause to change the way they think which is controversial will affect people's lives, will affect people's industry and cause a load of aggro for a lot of important people. So that was an easy one. <laughs> oh, it's a hard one. I mean, it really is because they don't want to use traditional PR because they have to go softly a bit. I mean, they're in the industry and they have their own livelihood to think of. You know, you, you, can't, you can't be the company that comes out and says, this material is unsafe in our industry because, funnily enough, all your suppliers that you rely on will not send you any more products. <laughs> Even if, you know, I don't mean the unsafe ones, I mean any more products, any more materials to build your item because they'd have to close ranks. And so it can't be that, it can't be a business driven campaign, it has to be a socially driven campaign from consumers, but someone needs to be the catalyst. And so the answer to the question is, how can I get support for a, a cause to spread a controversial message and, and cause quite a lot of trouble, really, but for the greater good, for the safety of consumers, they've spoken to trading standards, you know, they won't pick it up for whatever reason. You know, 
that means I need to drive it from below, from consumers, from members of the public. And how do I do that? The answer is, my God, it's really hard. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. If I'm being honest, there is no right set way to do that. Especially in those conditions. You know, I don't know, nor do you. Where's this textbook which says this is how I get a momentum for a campaign and cause and a big following and controversial, you know, features in the press? There's no textbook. My belief, and this is what I shared with them, is if you have a, a authentic message, which is we believe this to be the case, and you're backed up with some science, which I believe they are, and you do it selflessly, you're right. You know, there are, is anything selfless? Really? I mean, that sounds cynical, but even like, you know, charities, they have a self-interest. They want to change the world, so, but they get something from that emotionally, you know. That makes me sound a bit 80s. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you, you have to be seen to be doing it for the right reasons. That's what I meant. You need to be authentic. And I think they are. And you need to make sure you're right. You can't go off point with a message publicly that's controversial and affects people's lives, negatively and positively, depending on which side of the fence you're on, without being 100% sure you're right. And that's what we did a lot of initially, is, you know, are you sure you're right? Are you sure again? Are you sure? Are you sure? Right. So, there's no one set way. I don't know the answer any more than you, but I certainly have an idea because I'm a human being. People pay me to have ideas, and this is it. And this is what I shared with them. You need to create an online presence which looks like a lobbying group. That is a blog. That is a blog-type website which will contain your research and your messages and your opinions. You need to spend two months building up the content so you don't look like you just launched today. You need to have a substantial amount of relevant data to the message, this product is unsafe because, on the site. Only then can you go out to the members of public or consumers or industry and say, look at this. Because you must have a critical mass of evidence and message. That's what they've been doing up to today. Today was about, look, what do you think? We've done this, what do you think? And my opinion was, that looks exactly like a lobbying website for a proper campaign for any message in health and safety or uh, anything to do with um, well-being. So that's great. It looks like a really good website. They've done posters and everything. It looks good. What next? I need a lucky break. If I can't go to the paper or the local press or the radio and start shouting, and they can't, okay, then I need someone else to shout for me. That's all I'm left with. And what we did last time is we wrote down a list of 25 high-profile social media tweeters. People like Kirsty Alsop, who have high following who care about the same issues they care about, health and safety in the house. And we research their Twitter accounts, their addresses, so at Kirsty House Up, wherever it might be, we produced a list of people we believed would be receptive to the message, to the campaign, which is to improve safety for consumers. At that point, I need to get lucky. I mean, that makes me sound so unprofessional. I need to get lucky. And so they will, and they have a schedule, they will send out tweets and messages to these people over the next 14 weeks, trying to find a moment where one of their entourage or support team, or they themselves, read it at the right time, at the right moment for how they feel. I mean, good luck. Right, the chances are low. This has a less than 5% chance of working. The goal is, is to get someone with a large following to retweet our tweet and say, go and look at this, I support this campaign. That's all we want to happen. Uh, but the chances are, are minuscule because they get tweeted every day by hundreds, thousands of people. We just need to find them at the right moment. And the only way I can do that is to keep sending them stuff. <laughs> we don't know the right moment. And so there is a schedule where they will send out a tweet once every two weeks with a, a topic around the safety campaign. 
about these materials, looking for a retweet. That's all we need. We need a catalyst. Okay? So there is science. You know, I work out who I want to retweet. So, you know, I look at their following and think, I think those people would care about what we do. I contact them directly and say, you know, here's a message, will you retweet it? Not quite that directly, but you know, the inference is there. And uh, we do it over a period of 14 weeks. And we try and get lucky. We try and get the retweet. Then we have a catalyst. And from there it goes itself. Once I get a following and they believe in the cause, then, well, this is bad too. I can't control it, it has a life of its own. So, that's what we did today.